Time African and Women's Day. What Pan-African Women's Day means to me is the continuation of the struggle that African women have made to their liberation and giving voice to what they believe is for their future. Pan-African Women's Day is necessary because we truly do need to recognize the unsung heroes of our world, which are Pan-African women. As a young um, African uh, woman that, to have grown up in, in Ethiopia, uh, Pan-African Women's Day to me means recognizing all of the hardworking women in general. Um, so whether it be uh, professional women or stay-at-home moms, uh, it's an opportunity and it's a day to recognize all of the efforts that they put in to make our nation as great as it is. I believe it's very important to recognize the works of uh, the many African women, Pan-African women, who have strived for the liberation of our continent from colonial power uh, through the different struggles, whether it be military, whether it be economic, social, uh, cultural, or political. And we have these leaders to this day striving to uh, realize the Africa we all want. Back in high school, I remember looking forward to reading the national newspaper every Wednesday. There, a lady by the name Asunta Wagura wrote an article, and in this article, she spoke about her everyday life with HIV and AIDS. Asunta, in 1988, was called into a principal's office, and there, waiting for her were her tutors, student leaders, and her mother. She was told she had AIDS and had six months to leave. The institution chose to let her go because she was going to die. Her family and the local pastor made a barrier arrangement because she was going to die. During this time, Asuta tried several times to commit suicide. Later on, she would say, I'm glad I was a coward and I did not take my own life because I would not be the champion HIV and AIDS campaigner that I am right now. In 1993, Asunta, along with four other women, decided to form Kenwa, which is the Kenya network of women with AIDS. To date, Kenwa not only takes women, but also emotionally and financially helps men living with HIV and AIDS. Asunta is a force to be reckoned with. She spoke out in a country where nobody spoke out. She's a woman. She's a symbol of hope. She's a woman who's made us believe that there is so much more to HIV and AIDS. You can have a normal life. I want to remember Kayla McMillan because she is the first African-American woman to complete the PhD program in, com uh, in computer science. So when I'm thinking about her, uh, soon I become, I think uh, in Ethiopia mostly, there are no women uh, uh, who are taking the PH their PhD, mostly in computer science. So uh, I think I'm gonna be the first one, like her. The person I wanted to speak about is former Honorable Hafsa Mosi, who is from the Republic of Burundi. Honorable Mosi was recently gunned down by two assailants in the capital city of Bujumbura. But before that, she held several positions in the government of Burundi and with the East African Legislative Assembly. In the government of Burundi, she was a journalist and she was the Minister of Information from 2005 to 2007. Her contributions for women's issues were mostly through her presence. She was a journalist and was not uh, in any way shy about asking hard questions. Her community enjoyed the work that she's done to promote women's issues and to really give a voice to one of the countries that in the U.S. we don't hear much about, Burundi. So hats off to Honorable Minister uh, Hafsa Mosi for the work that she's done for women in Burundi, for women in East Africa, and for women on the continent. 
The Pan-African woman that inspires me the most is my key Swahili professor from my days as an undergraduate student at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. Her name is Lydia Karamba. Uh, we always call her Mwalimu Lydia, which means uh, Professor Lydia in uh, key Swahili. Uh, she truly embodied, I believe, what it means to be a Pan-African woman. As a professor, she always went above and beyond to ensure that her students were succeeding. You may not read about her in one of the history books, and this is likely the first time you've probably heard about her, but she is one of the thousands of heroes, Pan-African uh, women heroes, who deserve to be recognized, um, and they need to be recognized, and they contribute so much to our societies. These vignettes that we're telling about our personal heroes of Pan-African women, Profiles in Courage, that they stood up and challenged the, the system, they challenged the status quo, despite the challenges to themselves personally, um, in many cases, the danger to themselves. This is what being a Pan-African woman means to me, is being courageous and being a leader. If I had one message I'd like to leave behind for the women and especially the girls of Africa, as a woman of African descent, um, who has spent my entire career on the African continent professionally and who is married to an African man, I would like to say, be all you can be. Aspire to as much as you can. And no matter what the um, sacrifices might be in place or the no matter what the obstacles that you face, go after your dreams. They can be realized. Stay in school. Education is the most important tool for breaking down barriers and for changing race relations on the continent, as well as in other places where people of color live. And there should be nothing to hold you back. Although we have seen tremendous progress in um, all kinds of uh, talents that women are demonstrating, the opportunities that are available for women now, there's still a lot more that can be done. And I hope that you will look to the inspirational stories that have been told by the many people making this video, that you will be inspired to be all you can be as well. Do not let limitations hold you back.